Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cheetash. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about Chapter 2, Part 9 of 1984. Chapter 2, Part 9 is going to be broken up into three parts. Part 1, we're going to talk about Winston and him actually getting the book. And then chap uh, excuse me, Parts 2 and 3 are going to be about Goldstein's book itself. If you guys remember last time, Chapter 2, Part 8... Winston and Julia meet with O'Brien, and O'Brien gives them the whole spiel. They're, he welcomes them into the Club of the Revolution, the Club of the Brotherhood. And O'Brien mentions to Winston that he will be receiving the book, and they schedule plans. They make plans for this exchange to happen. In the first part of Chapter 2, Part 9 of this little three-part breakdown. Winston is going to receive the book. That is what we're going to talk about. And then Chav, uh, again, I keep saying chapter, but uh, part two, parts two and three of this little expose, we're going to take a look at specific chapters from Goldstein's book. So moving right along, let's just kick things off with where we have left off. Winston has left O'Brien's house and we pick back up in like the middle of hate week pretty much. And Winston's been working a ton. It says that he's worked 90 hours in five days. Crazy. And I know you guys are probably thinking, why would he work that much? Well, we're going to get into that in a second. Gelatinous. He's gelatinous with fatigue. This was the right word. It had come into his head spontaneously. His body seemed to have not only the weakness of a jelly, but its translucency. So he's tired, and he's looking for some much-needed time off because the party has actually told him, hey, you can have some time off now. And again, we're going to find out the reason for all of this work that he is doing. Um, as he is walking back to Sherrington's shop, Right, so he can take a little bit of time off. He's carrying a briefcase. Inside the briefcase is Goldstein's book. And it's revealed that he has had Goldstein's book for about six days now. And he has not really read it. Again, we're going to find out why he has not really read it in the six days. And it's kind of tough. You would have to think it's kind of tough to read something like that back home in front of the telescreen. Right? Where would you do it? You can't do it like at work. Somebody might see you. You can't do it at home. The telescreen might see you. Neighbors might see you. So I'm guessing he planned this out to wait until he can get back in the cozies of Sherrington's shop and get back up into that rented room where there is no uh, telescreen that we know of. But... How does he really get the book? Well, it's it's in the middle of hate week. It's the sixth day of hate week. And there's a bunch of stuff going on. It's a huge celebration. There's waxworks, processions, speeches, trumpets. I'm assuming there's like marches, parades, and stuff like that. Uh, there's public hangings of Eurasian war criminals. And people are going honestly crazy. The crowd is going crazy. Everybody's loving it. This is like Mardi Gras, basically, is what it kind of sounds like. This is the Mardi Gras for Oceania. But then something happens. An announcement is made. And this turns everybody upside down. That Oceania makes an announcement, the party makes an announcement, that Oceania was not, after all, at war with Eurasia. Oceania was at war with East Asia. And Eurasia was an ally. And with this, everything gets thrown in a commotion. Everything has to change instantly. Remember, because the party is always right, and the past has to be rectified now to be absolute. Well, we're at war with East Asia now, but we were always at war with East Asia. So now the record books have to be changed. Winston has to go back to work and put in hours to now change everything in the past. 
And this is kind of weird that it's happening during hate week. It is a little bit weird. And Winston kind of postulates here that this is maybe the work of Goldstein and the Brotherhood to kind of try to maybe sabotage hate week and get them to change it in order to cause this sort of commotion. And it's crazy. Winston actually lays it out here. His voice, because there's a guy talking and like making a speech and like halfway through his speech, he has to like improvise and start utilizing this new enemy that they have and referring to their old enemy as their ally. And he does it like mid-speech and Winston kind of comes across as very impressed by it. He, he mentions that, yeah, this is kind of a hard thing to do. He says, the speech had been proceeding for perhaps 20 minutes when a messenger hurried on the platform and a scrap of paper was slipped into the speaker's hand. He unrolled it, read it. Nothing altered in his voice or manner or in the content of what he was saying, but suddenly the names were different. Without words said, a wave of understanding rippled through the crowd. Oceania was at war with East Asia. And the next moment there was tremendous commotion. The banners and posters were all wrong. Quite half of them had the wrong faces on them. It was a sabotage. And this is where he says, oh, it's, it's Goldstein at work. And then Winston mentions, oh, where a man taps Winston on the shoulder. And the man back to work to try to rectify everything you in relation to this new brand new area that was on a completely different well now you have to replace eurasia right they're not the enemy anymore you replace it with east asia now to the right so it reads east asia to the to the right of moldova well that would be wrong you have to like completely it, it, it just i don't know if i'm doing a good job of explaining it but it just takes a lot more and Winston mentions that this one's going to be tough. And he ends up spending a lot of time there. Like I said, 90 hours in five days. He's wiped out. They give him some time off at the end of this. I'm trying to see if I can find the passage where they actually tell him, hey, on the morning of the sixth day, the dribble of cylinders slowed down. Everywhere at about the same time the work was easing off. A secret sigh went through the department. It was now impossible for any human to prove the documentary evidence that the war with East Asia had ever happened. Eurasia had ever happened. At 1200, it was unexpectedly announced that all workers in the ministry were free till tomorrow morning. So Winston takes his briefcase He's going back to Sherrington shop and he's going to open it up and he's going to finally get to read it. And that's actually what happens. He heads back to Sherrington shop, opens up the briefcase and he finds the book. And the book is in kind of a bad shape. It's, it's a heavy black volume, no name on the cover, no title. I don't even think there was an author on, on there. Pages were worn out at the edges, so you can tell that the book's been passed around a lot. This might be like one of the older copies. Obviously, it hasn't been destroyed. It's not a newer copy that they had to produce, so it's changed hands quite a bit. The print was very irregular. Oh, and earlier, did I say no name on the cover or the title? Yes, that's what I... There's no author. No author. It, Goldstein. Goldstein's name is not on it. Uh, but when he opens it up, the inscription on the title page ran, the theory and the practice of oligarchical collectivism. And then here is where eventually the author is stated, by Emmanuel Goldstein. And here is where Winston is going to open the book up. He's going to start at chapter one. And chapter one is... Ignorance is strength. And this is kind of how Goldstein's book is broken down into those the, the three sayings of Oceania. What are they? War is peace. Ignorance is strength. Freedom is slavery. And each chapter is dedicated to each of those 
isms, each of those sayings. So he starts at chapter one, which is ignorance and strength, but then he stops reading and he just kind of appreciates that he's able to read in comfort and safety of the room. And I wonder if that foreshadows anything that is about to happen. He's been spending a lot of time in his room. He really appreciated, appreciates it. It's comfort and safe. He was alone. No telescreen. No ear at the keyhole. Is this foreshadowing something? And then he opens it up to a different place and finds himself at the third chapter. And the third chapter being War is Peace. And this is what we're going to talk about next time in part two, War is Peace. And I know you guys can already kind of tell there's three parts that we're going to do here about the book. This was the first part, meaning we have two parts left, but there's seemingly three chapters here. We're only going to talk about two of them, and there's a reason for that. But we'll get to that eventually.